All right, folks, listen, I'm back at it again with another one of my copycat videos, right? Listen, today we're doing copycat KFC, you know, just potato wedges, right? That's what they are. You know, some people call them mojo potato wedges. You know, but these right here are going to be like super crispy, way over the top with the flavor. Hey, I'm not finna over talk it. We finna get it. Now, look, as we fly over these ingredients right here, you can see it's not a whole lot of ingredients, right? And I've already washed my uh, potatoes, right? I'm going to go ahead and hit them, you know, to dry them off a little bit with a paper towel, right? So you don't need a whole lot, you know what I mean? I do about three pounds, you know what I mean? It's up to you how big your family is. And don't forget the full ingredient list will be on my website. That's smoking and grilling with AB.com. And that's W-I-T-A-B.com. Now, all right, so here we go, right? So I got my potato here. What we want to do is we just want to cut this down. I'm going to do it this way. You guys can cut them down however you want to. I'm going to take it like that, like this. And then right here on the point, right? If you take that, just get it lined up. And if you're using a sharp knife, when you cut it, they'll come like this. Look at this wedge. See, real simple. I'll show you again. Here it is right here. All right, we just bring it, bring it along that way. That's a good size. Actually, I can get this one a little smaller. You know what I mean? Look, there we go. Now, over here, I got a bowl, you know, full of cold water. Look, this will keep them from turning brown, right? So again, we'll just come over here I cut them down. You can cut them down like this, like the way I'm showing you. And I'm going to do one more for you to show you another way that you can do it. But the thing, the thing is, you want to have them all the same thickness, right? If you feel like it's too thick, like that's a good size. If you feel like this one might be, a, nah, they're still about the same. And that one and that one, that's good. We'll just put them here, right? But I'm going to take this one here and watch what I do with this one here. I'm going to cut it in half, cut this one in half and do the same with that, right? Now that I have it, now I'm going to half it here. And then I'm going to take it and cut it just like we did on that, on the crest. We still got the same thickness, it's just a little shorter. Okay, so listen, this is what I did. I started heating up my uh, my Dutch oven. This art, obviously, it's got my oil in it. I'll show you guys right here. Listen, we want to get to 350, so that's it right there. Put the lid on it so it'll like, you know, keep all my heat in the inside, right? Now, what we want to do is we want to Get yourself two stations, right? This is super easy. Check it out. All your dry in one, all your wet in the other. Now we just got milk and egg, right? So I'm gonna go ahead. Oh, can't do it no better than that. And I didn't get no shell, right? So now I'm gonna go ahead and add my milk to it. Grab my whisk. and try not to make a mess. Next, we're gonna go ahead and set up our dry, right? So we add our flour. Now the flour part vary. You know what I mean? It depends on how much you're gonna use. I'm gonna reserve some back. Now, for those of you guys that don't have my seasoning, what I'm doing is I'm giving you guys everything you need to, you know, replicate a good seasoned flour, right? Now let me grab my new whisk. You know what I mean? Then we go from there, right? So once we got this incorporated, you should be able to see it, see a little bit of the flour and your seasoning, it should change a little color. You don't want it to be that bleach white, right? Now for me, I'm gonna go ahead and level mine up. Let's see here, I'm looking for my A seasoning, folks. As you can see, I go through this A and B. I like my B for my heavier meats, but the profile on this A right here is nice with a little bit of combination from my uh, AP seasoning. That'll do it right there, folks. Okay, so look, it's really that simple, right? So I got my potatoes over there, they soaking, right? Real easy. Now, I'm gonna have the camera pull back a little bit. Look, I got a baking sheet, you know what I mean? A baking sheet, and then I got a cooling rack. Once I do my, listen, this is how we're gonna start because we've been soaking the water for about 30 minutes, right? So listen, I'm gonna drain that and then I'm gonna take it and put it in there. It's gonna be a little bit on the wet side, right? So that'll make the flour stick, right? From that, we're gonna come in this, our wet, and then we go back over here and then our final resting place will be right here on the sheet, right? So let me take this now. Let's go ahead and drain. Now, as much as I would like to, you know, tell you guys this right here is doing something, 
all we doing is dredging, right? So we just put this over here just like this. Let me just go ahead and get myself a, a little fork. You know what I mean? So I can kind of like move this around and this is fine. Just like you see. Get off your excess, just drop. Real simple, give it a little tap, drop, tap, drop. We can move this out the way now. And then we just continue. I would love to make this more complicated than what it is, but trust me folks, super easy, big on flavor. You know what I mean? Uh, some of y'all here to work KFC and be one of the Koreans, but listen, they still building them and making them. You know what I mean? So somebody eating there, folks. All right, so look, I use that fork, right? Then I just put them and put them right back. Real easy, folks. You notice I didn't like crowd them up. You know what I mean? You can see how the flour, the seasoned flour, how everything like sticks to it. It starts getting that little bit of that texture on there. That's what you guys are gonna come to know you know, when you're doing these type of potatoes. All right. And now we just coat, right? And that right there do it. Now I'm getting ready to check my temperature. You know, my oil once again, make sure I have them past my point. And then if you ever get too hot, you guys all know what to do. Just add a little bit more oil to it, right? And we just do them like that, real simple. Like I said, I would love to like prolong this, but I can't, it's like super easy. You know what I mean? It's really about just this technique that we're doing right here. You know what I mean? Once we do it, and you can see the different layer. You know what I mean? That's how it's gonna fry. And that's what gives us that little crunchiness. Kind of like resembles like chicken bread. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest of these and I'm not gonna bore you guys. Now you guys get to see how it's done. All right, so look. I want to show you guys this. Listen, this is why you got to have one of these thermometers, right? You see where we at, 355, 360. It's still kind of rising. It's starting to slow down right there. 365, that's what you want to have. Reason being, because when I put this in the inside, once I put these in there, it's going to lower my temperature, and I don't want to go past 350, right? So I'm going to just go ahead and start taking these. Let's see, picking them up like that. Let's just test one. You ready? That's perfect. Now you don't want to overcrowd it, you know what I mean? You really don't want them to be like touching or nothing like that. Notice when I put them in there, I put them in, I don't want to make no splashing. We let them work on their own. And then, you know, when they come to like, when they done, they'll start to float, right? And then we want to get that color. Okay, so once I have my, 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 my wedges in the inside, right? I look at that, look at that, 340. You know what I mean? Uh, we want to get this up. So then I make an adjustment here on my fire because I want to stay at 150, I mean 350. You know what I mean? So it'll start picking up right now. All right, so when they start floating, you see that right there? Look at that color. Yes, sir. Okay, folks, so listen. This is what you guys gonna wanna have. Did I get one to try to leave out of here? You know what, just for it jumping out of here, I'm gonna go ahead and eat it. I'm gonna set him up right here for right now, but I just wanna show you. I hope you guys can hear this, listen. Okay, I see it crispy. I know I did. You know what I mean? Uh, really, it's just like the process. You know what I mean? Uh, look, soaking them, I only soaked them in the water, right? I didn't do all that rinsing and taking the starch off or nothing like that. I did that, soak them for about 30 minutes. If you can soak them for an hour, that's great. And then once you get them coated, check this out. You know, you can put them in the refrigerator and leave them overnight and then bring them back the next day and then serve them, you know, then fry them when they nice and hot. That way they really, really had a chance to adhere. Hey, I'm giving you guys pro tips. But listen, like I said, I'm not finna over talk it. I'm finna give it a dip. Hey, I got one for you. I want you guys to let me know what's your ketchup. Do you guys do that Heinz or do you do Hunts? You know what I mean? Or they got them other brands out there too. But I'm gonna tell you Heinz and uh, Hunch is like the big brands that everybody know. I know mine, my favorite is. Check it out, it's Heinz. Cheers, y'all. Ooh, ooh, wee. Hey, this right here gonna get me in trouble. Now listen, I'm gonna make some more of these fresh tomorrow. I already let the cat out the bag. Cause check it out, what's dropping this Sunday will be how to make, uh, we just gonna say, how to do fried chicken the right way. Listen, we are gonna double batter it. I'm gonna show you how to get that bread like you guys wanna do it. And I'm gonna show you how you can have foolproof where you don't even have no issues, you know, deep off into the meat cause we are gonna do it with, you know, have, making sure we got the bone and them thighs. Now, 
Talking about these right here, these are just like super fire, super easy to make. You know what I mean? Uh, this is great if you're working with like, you know, you got somebody new in the kitchen, tell them to start off with making something like this. They'll come up with some, you know, some nice success. Now listen, I'm not finna over talk it. I want you guys to tell me two things. What would you do to make this over the top? What type of seasonings would you do? And then tell me what your favorite ketchup is. I told you Heinz is the way to go. Hey, with that being said, listen, if you're new to my channel, let me take this time to say thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, smash that subscribe button and tell everybody out there here. Check this out. There's a channel out here that's simplifying these recipes and taking the mystery out of cooking. Hey, you know how I do. I always got some great Kool-Aid on the back. You know what I'm saying? So I'm about to eat. I'm out. Peace.